Hi everyone, Sif Alchemist here. Today, I'm going to talk about three phases of alchemy. The phases of alchemy are basically what leads alchemists to go from lead into gold. These are three phases or three main stages. It's the first one is nigredo or the darkening. The second phase is albedo or whitening. And the third stage is rubedo or reddening or becoming red because the philosopher's stone, the color of the, the philosopher's stone is red. So the last stage, the third stage is rubedo. It's when you accomplish the philosopher's stone and when you become godlike. The first stage of alchemy, darkening or nigredo, that is the prima materia. It's the darkness. It is a representation that everything in the beginning is dark. It's darkness, it's beauty, it's creation. It's just oneness. Oneness is darkness. It's the foundation of creation. It's the foundation of the universe. And that is the first stage. You have to be there. You have to first understand that everything is one, that everything is dark, that everything belongs to everything, that you are part of everything, everything is part of you. That's the first stage of alchemy. And that is represented by lead, the metal lead. And in order to make the lead into gold, or the Philosopher's Stone, you have to go through the stage of the whitening, where you dissolve that lead, you dissolve it under high heat, or you oxidize it by introducing certain like elements to it or liquids that will oxidize the metal, the lead. It needs to be reduced to its original form. So therefore, alchemists would introduce high heat or they would oxidize the lead until it becomes ash, like to its original form, until you're only left with the elements that you need to extract from the ashes that make the purest form of that metal. Because lead is already mixed with a lot of things, and that's a, the representation of the human being. By the time you want to transform, you already carry so much baggage with you. You already carry so much programming and brainwashing and dogmas and doctrines that you don't need in your life. So that's you, you become lead, like lead. And then you have to go through the darkening phase or nigredo, where you have to purify yourself so you can become like the prima materia you go to your original form. And in order to go to your original form, you have to get rid of all of the things that don't matter to you. That's why something external has to be applied to lead, like fire or oxidizing uh, liquids or materials. They're external elements. That's why uh, this can be mirrored in life when you're going through a transformational process, something external is going to trigger your transformation. To shed the layers that are not yours, something external has to trigger that. In alchemy, that's fire, for example. You put fire under uh, the material until it burns and it becomes liquid or ash. And then from there, you go to phase number two, which is the whitening or albedo. That's the phase where you take all of the elements from the first phase, because now you have the purest form. The purest form, and now you take it to the whitening phase. Because in this phase, you're at your purest. It's like you're, you're born from scratch. You still, like a baby, you don't know anything. 
So now we're gonna take this original pure form of the material and we're gonna work with it again. We're gonna implement new materials to it that are better, not like the first phase, that are much better. We're gonna implement new metals, mix, and the alchemist would do the experimentation on that pure form of the metal in this second phase, which is the whitening, albedo. And then after the alchemist in this second phase or second stage, we'll do all of the work to make this pure form stronger, powerful, better. We move on to the third stage and the last one, which is rubedo, the reddening. That's where you become the Philosopher's Stone. The moral is that being pure in the second phase is not enough. You need to do the work. You need to learn. You need to gain knowledge. You need to practice. You need to travel the world. You need to experiment. You need to know new things that are better for you, not destructive like how you were prior to your transformation. You need to basically harness anything that makes you a better person, a better soul, a better human. And after you do so and you practice and you embody the new version of you, then you rise from the ashes like a phoenix and you transition to the third phase, which is the reddening, rubedo, which is where you find your philosopher's stone which is basically your highest potential. The Philosopher's Stone is your highest potential. It's your higher self. It's you at your peak, at your highest version. That's who you are. And that's why you become godlike. You can manifest anything you want and you can mold your life to your likings. At least your life, not other people's lives. I'm saying your life. So these are the three stages of alchemy. The first stage, Negredo, is represented by a crow. The second stage, Albedo, is represented by a dove. And the third stage, Rubedo, the Philosopher's Stone, is represented by a phoenix because it's rising from the ashes. And this also, the alchemical concept of volatile in the fix, because at first we have lead, and lead is a fixed material. It's very fixed. It's dense, it's physical. And to volatile it, to make it volatile, to make it subtle, so we can have something to work with, you have to introduce it to something that will volatile it, that will make it subtle. Hence why we say volatile in the fix. So you go from physical to spiritual because they are the same but to make the physical spiritual there's some work that needs to be done and that is the alchemical process that's why as i mentioned you have to uh, dissolve the material which is also the dissolution stage this this darkening is the dissolution stage where you have to dissolve the material so you have to in introduce it to heat and oxidize it so it dissolves and it becomes something subtle that you can work with. And that's the transfer to the second phase, which is albedo or whitening. Because in that phase, now you're working with the subtle, something that's volatile, because we already volatile the fix. And from that subtleness, when you work with the material, with the pure form of the material, and you add different things to it and different new materials that are better, this can be represented for you in your life where you're trying to transform yourself. You get rid of your old toxic behavior, negative uh, uh, surroundings, anything that's bad for you, you leave it behind and you, you reintroduce something that's better for you, something better for your life, something positive, positive behaviors, taking care of your health, eating healthy, exercising, surrounding yourself with positive people, making sure you do the things that you love. So 
when when you do that that's the second phase which is albedo you're kind of rebuilding yourself but rebuilding yourself with something that's positive something that's better and from there on now at the second stage which is albedo to go to the rubedo to the red phase where you find your philosopher's stone we have to again fix the volatile because we have something that's volatile that's subtle in this phase because you're still you don't know what you are but you're working on yourself and then boom you move to the third phase which is the philosopher's stone phase the reddening phase and in that phase the stone the philosopher's stone is the materialization of the new work you have been doing that's why you're fixing the volatile again so you go from physical to spirit and then from spirit you embody that spirit and you become physical again you see, you see how it is it's actually very interesting from physical to your essence to your spirit and then you work on yourself spiritually and then from that spiritual work that you've done you have to concretize yourself and make yourself materialize and then by doing so you become the philosopher's stone the red stone in the third stage and you rise from the ashes like a phoenix phoenix that's why we say rise from the ashes that's you know this saying rise from the ashes like a phoenix this is alchemy because the ashes what ashes are we talking about here have you ever wondered why we say rise from the ashes why the phoenix would have to rise from the ash it's the ash of the second stage of alchemy which is albedo because in that stage you're only working with something very volatile some like ash you're working with very with things that don't have any physical form but then in the third stage the phoenix the new you the new excellent you rise from the ashes it solidifies again from the spirit to the physical and that's why we say rise from the ashes like a phoenix that is a hundred percent alchemical concept but it's used widely around the world for everything and the phoenix the bird the phoenix it's red the color of the phoenix is red so that's why the third stage is red and when you Arise from the ashes like a phoenix, now you are godlike. Because now you're embodying, you're in the physical realm, because now you're becoming physical again. You fix the volatile, but you're embodying all of the spiritual work that you've done. You're embodying it. All these saints and sages around the world, that's what they've been doing. They work on themselves spiritually, like the Buddha, for example. And once they, they be, they gain enlightenment, if you will, that sort of uh, enlightenment or whatever you want to call it, that state. They come back physically. So they've done the spiritual work and now they become in a physical form because they become their own philosopher's stone. They arise from the ashes and then they spread and share with the world what they have accomplished or what they have learned when they were in the spirit realm when they were spiritually evolving so these are the three stages of alchemy they're very philosophical but i love them so much and we can learn from them there are three nigredo albedo rubedo the crow the dove and the phoenix we're talking about lead into gold, lead into the Philosopher's Stone. We're talking about volatile in the fix and then fixing the volatile. And that is the beauty of alchemy. You can transform, you can reduce yourself to ashes and then you can become a beautiful stone that can inspire and help everyone around the world now 
If you look online, you're gonna find many other information about stages of alchemy. Some people say there's seven. Each alchemist in medieval times had their own stages. So you're gonna find different information. Some people say that there's four, some people say there's seven, some people that say that there's 12, but the main stages that every alchemist had to go through are three. And they are basically the, ma the main ones. So that's why I decided to share them with you. But don't get confused if you go out there and try to find this information online, you're gonna find completely different things Everyone is saying a different thing, and especially from medieval alchemists. But keep in mind that three is the number of mastery. There's always three stages to anything that requires mastery. So I just wanted to share this alchemical information with you. I hope you are embarking on your transformational journey to reaching your philosopher's stone. That's what I have for the stages of alchemy. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.